Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Management TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Welcome once again to Dazian News and here is today's news. Malaysia Vaccination Center closed after 200 workers were infected with COVID-19. The country's science minister say a COVID-19 vaccination center in Malaysia is ordered to close for sanitization after more than 200 volunteers and workers there tested positive over the weekend. Saya telah mengarahkan supaya satu ujian saringan COVID-19. Minister Khairi Jamaluddin tells reporters those inoculated from July at the center about 25 kilometers outside Kuala Lumpur are advised to self-isolate for 10 days. Khairi adds the facility has a capacity of about 3,000 doses daily. The 455 workers and volunteers screened and 204 tested positive. The incident comes as Malaysia reports 11,079 new coronavirus infections last week, the most number of cases recorded in a single day since the start of the pandemic. Kairi notes the center will resume vaccinations after sanitization and change in staffing. China provides 500 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine to the international community to fight the epidemic. Foreign Ministry spokesman Zhao Lijian says China has provided more than 100 countries and international organizations with 500 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines and concentrates accounting for one-sixth of the current global COVID-19 vaccine production. So far, China has provided more than 100 countries and international organizations with 500 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines and concentrates, accounting for one-sixth of the current global COVID-19 vaccine production. Chinese vaccines supplied to the WHO-led COVAX initiative have also rolled off the production line and will be sent to the WHO as early as possible. Zhao says that China has always accommodated both domestic and foreign needs for COVID-19 vaccines, making positive response to all countries that asks for vaccine cooperation and launching cooperation with them. He also adds that China has become the country supplying of the largest number of vaccines to the developing country and having vaccine partner countries around the world. The spokesman says, with the support of the Chinese government, Chinese vaccine enterprises have carried out joint vaccine production in countries including the United Arab Emirates, Indonesia, Malaysia, Egypt, Brazil, Turkey, Pakistan and Mexico, with a total production capacity exceeding 200 million doses. Many foreign leaders have spoken highly of the great contributions of Chinese vaccines to their antivirus fight. Foreigners receiving China-made vaccine doses have also expressed their approval of Chinese vaccines. Zhao also stresses that China will continue to work with all parties to enhance vaccine cooperation and to make greater contribution to ending the pandemic. Residents in Myanmar long queues to get oxygen after infection sores in the country. Residents in Myanmar are struggling to secure supplies of oxygen to treat COVID-19 patients amid a record-setting wave of infections, even as the military authorities pledged to ramp up supplies. A video obtained by Reuters shows long queues are seen forming outside a factory in South Dagon, Yangon. Meanwhile, according to a resident, the queue is for oxygen supplies, but they are very difficult to get it. Another resident in Yangon's insane district says some people had resorted to using oxygen cylinders from the welding industry due to the shortages of equipment. The state-run MRTV says Myanmar records 80 coronavirus deaths and 5,014 new cases with positive results for more than a third of people tested. According to the health ministry, Myanmar has reported 208,257 cases and 4,181 deaths until now. 
Singapore cruise ship returns to port after suspected COVID-19 case. Singapore's Tourism Board says a ship operated by Genting Cruise Lines on a so-called cruise to nowhere returns to the city-state after a passenger was suspected of having contracted COVID-19 and remaining guests were asked to stay in their cabins. The 40-year-old passenger test positive on the polymerase chain reaction test on board and had been sent to hospital for further confirmatory testing. The passenger was identified as a close contact of a confirmed case. The tourism board says the guest has tested negative. During a pre-departure antigen rapid test, the passenger's three traveling companions were identified and isolated. They have tested negative for COVID-19 and further contact tracing was being done. The global cruise industry has taken a major hit from the coronavirus pandemic, with some of the earliest big outbreaks found on cruise ships. Singapore, which has seen relatively few domestic COVID-19 cases, launched round trips on luxury liners in November, which have no port of call and last only a few days. China warns the United States to stop conducting political manipulation on Xinjiang Bill. China warns the United States to stop conducting political manipulation after the United States Senate passed a bill to ban the import of oil products from China's Xinjiang region. China has repeatedly stated our position on Xinjiang-related issues. The United States side hyped up the so-called Xinjiang forced labor and the true intent is to damage the prosperity and stability in Xinjiang. It deprives the Xinjiang people of their basic rights to survival, employment and development, and engages in forced unemployment and forced poverty. This has fully exposed the sinister intentions of the United States in trying to use Xinjiang to control China. What the United States should do is to change their attack and self-examine all the bad behaviors on human rights issues, pay more attention to the U.S. own problems, do some practical things for their own people's good, and stop wasting time and energy to smear and attack China through the so-called forced labor issue, and stop advancing the related bill and stop conducting political manipulation. The United States Senate passed the legislation. It now must pass the House of Representatives before it can be sent to the White House for President Joe Biden to sign into law. It is latest effort in Washington to punish Beijing for what United States officials says is an ongoing genocide against Uyghurs and other Muslim groups. China has repeatedly denied claims of human rights abuses in Xinjiang. Rights group RT Japan to stop real estate projects involving Myanmar. Human rights groups calls Japan to cancel a real estate project involving Myanmar's defense ministry, saying the project is linked to the military, which has waged a deadly crackdown since the February 1st coup. Japan's private firms and state entity are engaged in a multi-million dollar hotel and office development on land owned by Myanmar's defense ministry. Rights groups, including Human Rights Watch, says Japan failed to assess the risk associated with doing business in Myanmar. We think that the Japanese companies and relevant organizations should uphold their responsibilities and withdraw from the Y-Complex project that could be funding the Myanmar junta, which has repeatedly violated human rights even before the coup. The group says, through rent payments, the Y Complex project benefits Myanmar's defense ministry, which is controlled by the military under the country's constitution. Japanese companies and government officials have said they thought the rent, which was paid by an intermediary, was ultimately going to Myanmar's government, not the military. South Korea reports more than 1,000 new cases of COVID-19.
Health Ministry says South Korea reports 1,650 new coronavirus cases is a record high that breaks the previous peak set last week as the country tightens social distancing rules across most of the country. As of 0000 a.m. today, 1,568 new domestic cases confirmed and 47 cases from overseas inflow, which makes a total of 1,615 cases. Specifically, 1,179 cases are from greater capital area, 633 cases are confirmed in Seoul. This is the first time over 1,000 cases were reported in metropolitan areas since the coronavirus outbreak. The Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency says the clusters of infections spring up quickly around the capital Seoul and neighboring areas fueled by the Delta variant. Residents in Seoul expressed worry over the record high cases and the country's vaccination plan after the temporary suspension of reservation for those in 50s. The Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency chief Jong Eun Kyung apologized after a planned rollout of vaccines for people aged 55 to 59 was halted for a week after the rush of people trying to get a shot crashed a government-run reservation website. I apologize once again for not fully explained about the amount of available vaccines and causing inconvenience to those who couldn't make a reservation. Due to temporary suspension, the amount of Moderna vaccine scheduled to arrive over the third quarter is enough to vaccinate all people in their 50s for their first and second vaccination. She adds the government ordered sufficient supplies of vaccines, but the scheduling of some shipments over coming weeks had not been finalized. Telling implement strict coronavirus lockdown around the capital after cases spiked. Thailand implements its toughest coronavirus restrictions in more than a year in Bangkok and surrounding provinces, with new curbs on movement and gatherings imposed and widespread suspensions by airlines and bus firms. Authorities have urged people around Bangkok, the outbreak epicenter, to work from home and have set up 145 checkpoints in 10 high-risk provinces, including 88 in the capital, to try to curb non-essential regional travel. The restrictions initially for two weeks aim to slow the spread of the coronavirus and include a curfew, mall closures and five-person limit on gatherings after a period of record or new record deaths and cases. Meanwhile, Health Minister says Thailand mass immunization strategy against the coronavirus will now include administering a shot of AstraZeneca's viral vector vaccine after one dose of Sinovac's vaccine. Health Minister Anutin Charm Virakul reports the move aims to increase protection against highly transmissible variants. Thailand records 8,656 infections and 80 deaths among the 345,027 cases and 2,791 fatalities overall, the vast majority from an outbreak since early April that is being fueled by the highly transmissible Alpha and Delta COVID-19 variants. Vietnam starts implementing blocking measures to fight the worst COVID-19 virus in the country. Vietnam's economic hub Ho Chi Minh City began a two-week lockdown in hopes of containing the country's worst COVID-19 virus outbreak. The Vietnam's health ministry reports the measures effective for 15 days from Friday include a stay-home order, a ban on more than two people gathering, and a closure of public transport services. Witnesses say shelves at the supermarkets were being emptied since late Tuesday as they jeered up for tighter measures. The city chairman Nguyen Tan Pong says in a health ministry statement, fighting the pandemic is fighting the enemy. We have to accept to sacrifice short-term interest to prevent and fight the pandemic. Burmese funeral services exceeded after COVID-19 toll rises in the country.
Hundreds more bodies are being brought in for funerals every day in Junta ruled Myanmar as new wave of COVID-19 sweeps across the country. The accounts from different parts of Myanmar point to daily death tolls being higher than those given by the health ministry, which hit a record 145 fatalities. Reuters is unable to reach either the health ministry or a junta spokesman for further comments on the figures. Funeral services says the number of funerals at the Aiwei Cemetery in Myanmar's biggest city Yangon was around 200 per day over the past week, well over double the number that would normally be expected. There are similar increases at two other cemeteries in the city, with 400 to 500 bodies being cremated there per day. Coronavirus cases started to rise in Myanmar in June and have soared in the past two weeks with a record 7,089 infections. According to official figures, there have been more than 208,000 infections and 4,181 deaths in the country since the start of the pandemic. In addition, health workers believe the case numbers are far higher than officially reported because testing collapsed after the military seized power from elected leader Aung San Suu Kyi on February 1st coup. Around one in three tests recently has been positive compared to the 5% that the World Health Organization has said shown an outbreak is being brought under control. The rate briefly rose above 20% last year as Suchi's government brought the second wave of infections under control. Many medics have joined a civil disobedient movement stopping work at state hospitals in protest at the coup. <laughs> That's the wrap up. Stay safe, stay healthy and have a lovely day.